Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Uh, my name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host uh, for this wonderful segment of creating vector illustrations in Photoshop. Uh, and I am joined by my new friend, Monica. How are you, Monica? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. How are you? Doing? <laughs> I'm doing excellent. I'm super excited to get to um, watch you create today um, and kind of go through your process and, and see what you create. Um, but before we get into like the details of um, what the stream holds for us today, I would first like to jump into the schedule just to let everyone know a little bit about what's coming up after us today and also what they can expect tomorrow. So I'm going to pull this up. Uh, we did have Claudia from Print My Soul up this morning with the intro to uh, Photoshop compositing, which was really cool. Um, and Paul Tranny was on just before us with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Uh, we're having me and Monica here at 930, as you can see on the schedule. And then Julia Masalska, the one and only, is going to be up right after us with the Illustrator at Daily Creative Challenge. Uh, we've got Paul up uh, at about noon uh, Pacific time with the UI UX case study segment, followed by the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge with Jesse Showalter. Um, and then we're doing Design in the Dark with uh, Andrew Hockrattle and Logan Ferber, which I think is going to be splendid. So definitely stick around for the rest of the segments that we have coming up today because we are not the only designers that are going to be on. Um, and yeah, without further ado, I'd love to kind of jump in um, to a little bit about you, Monica. Why don't you tell everybody who you are, uh, what kind of art you do, you know, what work have you done in the past, and uh, uh, anything else you'd like to add about just like your passion for art and, and, and the things that you that you get up to. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I'm Monica Ahananu as you mentioned earlier. Um, I'm a freelance illustrator living in Los Angeles. I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. Um, I Today I'm going to be creating a vector illustration inspired by a few fashion designs or silhouettes that I am drawn to that I found, you know, reference images of. Um, it's going to be focused on, you know, silhouette, bright colors, and some organic shapes. Um, some of the clients that I've worked with uh, are DreamWorks Animation, Ferragamo, Adidas, Sprite, Red Table Talk, uh, Johnny Walker. Wow. Um, more. So yeah, that's a bit about me. Awesome. Um, yeah. That's a really impressive client list. I am so stoked about this. This is going to be awesome. Um, so I am going to pop over to where we can see your workspace and everything. Um, and then maybe you can kind of introduce uh, the project that you're going to be working on today um, and jump into it. Okay. Good to go. Can you see my workspace and mm -hmm. everything? We sure okay. can. So today we're gonna be, you know, kind of, I make these illustrations where it's these three girls and I do them kind of a lot, but I like to, you know, change up their outfits and practice on trying to create new silhouettes and a new balanced design. So today I'm gonna kind of show you how I use some of my reference images or images that I find that I'm inspired by to create this kind of design. Um, so we'll get started. Um, and I'm gonna edit these girls so you can see how I adjust everything and how you know, I've set up the composition so that, um, or my project so that I can edit it for future things and projects, or if I'm using it for a client to make changes. Awesome. So okay. right now, yeah. So right now I'm going through and like labeling, I got a bunch of reference. I'm going through and like labeling the ones that I think I'm going to use as green, as you can see on the side here. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them, um, and then if I label like yellow, usually that means it's like, there's something specific in it I want to use, but I'm not using most of it. Like for this image, I like the gloves and I think I might try to put gloves on one of them, like those long gloves. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. And so you can see the gloves again. I was really feeling that idea earlier. I really um, like this process. So you have like a lot of reference images that are inspiring to you that you're going to use for this project. And then you have a kind of um, uh, color coordinated or color coded 
code that you use for yourself to let yourself know what is on each of those layers without being incredibly specific. So you said green for, um, you know, that you want to um, go to that. Yeah, yellow, Mm -hmm. you said, is has an element in it that you think you might like to use. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Shape, so I'm considering maybe I'll do that on one of the girls, but that's a towards the end of the process. Oh, I love these hair pictures, these are amazing. Um, this one is interesting, but I don't think I'll use it, so that one won't have a label. So we're gonna start. Um, now what I'm gonna do is kind of just look at all these ones that I labeled as like green, and then I want to pick one that I'm gonna start with for the first girl's outfit. Those so. bell bottoms are. I'm living <laughs> I for those I right now. <laughs> like I definitely am going to use the like you know because it's really fun. Um, I just move things around. I like this really giant jacket. I nice. want to do like that. Um, I'd also like to take some time too while you're kind of organizing and setting this up, just to mm-hmm. um, greet all the folks in the chat. Um, uh, it looks like we've got Steve Festus Casaboom in the chat, um, and Michelle and Lindsay and Nick and our good friend and Epic moderator Cody Bear is in here taking care of us and posting all of the wonderful links. We got your portfolio link and everything in the chat so anyone can jump in and kind of check out your previous work if they like. Um, George says she had me at Johnny Walker. I agree. (laughs) Um, Sam is in the chat and says, uh, welcome, Monica and Val. Looking forward to this segment. I know. I'm also very excited, Samantha. Um, Larry is in the chat and Avila. Uh, It's good to see all of you folks. Um, Thank you uh, to all of the regulars tuning in once again. And thank you all of you newcomers um, who are jumping into the chat for the first time just to to hang out um, and, and see what's going on. Uh, A quick reminder to all of you, number one, if you're over on YouTube watching us, uh, please head over to behance.net slash live because that is where I will be able to see the chat. It's where you can post any questions that you have for Monica um, if you want answers to them. Um, And also we're going to be doing portfolio reviews uh, today. So if you would like a chance to get your portfolio reviewed, um, if you head over to the Photoshop Discord, which I can give you the link right here. Uh, if you go to bit.ly slash PS discord with that P and that S capitalized, you can post your portfolio in the portfolio review channel. Um, we will be able to choose two of those portfolios to go through and Monica and I will um, give a little bit of feedback on um, your work and presentation of your portfolio and see if we can give you some helpful tips that will um, improve your professional presence online. Um, So that's all the housekeeping points I've got. Now back to you, Monica. What are you, what are you working on? So I'm going to try to do this, these pants and see how I like it. Mm -hmm. Um, So just, I'm trying to see how I want to do the like little lines on her leg i love it i love it i'm working on starting that to see but also i can see how i make it work um but i'm also going to change the color because i don't want to i want to switch up the colors for this one so you're um using the the pen tool just to create the shapes to your liking here yes yeah i use the pen tool so all of these are vector shapes that i'm using and building up on top of each other so you know there's Shape there, shape there. This is a shape for hair. It's two shapes. Um, and depending on the color, you know, you won't see certain lines that I hide. But same with this one over here. There's some shapes underneath. So yeah, so I'm using the pen tool to, to build it up. Awesome. Um, and then um, you were kind of cycling through your shapes there. Um, huh. I assume you're doing a hotkey to kind of select through. How are you doing that where you can like click into all of your different shapes? So I'm using the direct selection tool. So sometimes it might you might see this where it's um, the like it's only a white outline. But if you want to click on your specific paths so you can edit them, you'll want to use that tool um, so that you oh, can like wow. get in there and click on it and quickly edit once you have the silhouette and stuff. So you don't have to go in through and find the layer. Um, or sometimes you can also go to the auto select like the move tool Mm -hmm. and you hold on the command button and you can click on shapes that way and it will find the layer for you over here which is always super helpful 
But with you using the direct select tool, you said that like kind of gives you the ability really to um, go back and edit these shapes. Yeah, to to mess with the points and stuff. That's super helpful. Yeah. So, and then to duplicate um, these shapes that I that's shape that I made, I'm doing Command J mm -hmm. so that I can you know duplicate it and just go down. That's one of my favorite hotkeys <laughs> that that uh duplicate command j i use that all the time throughout my work yeah, yeah. and then for this another way if i'm like okay i have three and i want to just duplicate that faster i'll hold down the option key and it shows the you know the double cursor like that mm -hmm. and then i'll hold shift just so it stays in alignment and i'll grab those to move them down nice nice yeah that's a lot of really great like just quick tips kind of to keep everything flowing very smoothly because I imagine yeah when you start doing things like this you probably have so many maybe like hundreds of different shape layers while you're putting these together and these are really yeah. great um, <laughs> bits of info just to like because I would be thinking like how do you keep track of everything in the file um, and as an illustrator, I usually have like a lot of layers, but my layers are usually super large, but I can see here you have like a lot of really small items on yeah. each layer. So I bet you, you can't really look at the layer um, preview in your layers panel and see what's there uh, with them being so tiny. So this is cool. You can kind of click around um, and very easily go to the layer you'd like to work on without having to sort through everything. Right. I'm gonna try. It. Yeah. Now I'm trying to see if I want to do it this way, even though everything's in this composition is mostly like straight angle or you know corners. Mm -hmm. um, see if it reads better if I do it as a disc versus uh, this other shapes that I was just doing. But that would require a little different type of yeah, a little experimentation, kind of working with the a, a, a few different approaches. That's cool. Um, right. We got some. Uh, some questions in the chat. Uh, it looks like Claire DeRosa would like to know, she says, I'm curious what um, Monica thinks the benefits are of using Photoshop vectors instead of illustrators. Is the workflow easier? Um, so for me, yes, because uh, I like that it's a lot easier for me in Photoshop to say, you know, if, I mean, you can still do this all in Illustrator, but for me, when I want to add textures, I like to just have everything in here, but also say I want to make all these pants green or also want to do my lighting. Um, I like that it's easy to do the clipping, much easier to do that in Photoshop for me. Mm -hmm. To like test things out faster versus having to go like inside those compositions that you do in Illustrator to do the, you know, uh, clipping masks and such. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Like, that's the, I think this is the biggest thing. And then also, you know, being able to um, add a pattern over it and like change it quickly. Mm -hmm. I like being able to do that just on one program. Um, so how I'm doing kind of like that stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, and I think generally too, because um, I sometimes myself, I do a lot of things in Photoshop that maybe most people would think like, why aren't you yeah. using Illustrator for this? But I think, you know, it really can come down to just the personal preference of the artist because there are so many different ways within like the Adobe suite to get a particular job done. Um, you know, you, you, if you take a hundred different artists and ask them to do the same thing, I bet you you'll get like a hundred different varied approaches to something. Um, yeah. And what may be super quick and easy to do in one program for one artist um, may be less enjoyable and feel kind of like kind of a drag to another artist. And so they will prefer to use another thing. And so I think that general enjoyment and a passion for using certain tools also comes into play when we're talking about what is the the most efficient way to get something done right because we love we love our work and we we're passionate about our work and we want to enjoy what we do um and uh, when we find ways to do certain things sometimes just sticking to what we know and what we feel comfortable with is the best option yeah yeah because i think it's like really big pref about preference there are things in uh illustrator that i do like um like certain ways that you can play with shapes. I feel like, um, I feel like whenever I'm in Illustrator, I'm able to create a lot more silhouettes faster if I'm trying to like figure out the silhouette of something because you can do that whole duplicate your composition thing very easily in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but 
yeah we're getting somewhere i don't love it but it may be fine once i sometimes just gotta build on it you know this oh is uh, the experimentation phase yeah. i get it <laughs> it's not reading the way I, I mean i know i need to add the lighting and stuff so that you can understand what's happening but we'll see we'll see from there so I think now. it's really good to show this though, because what it what it shows is like you are such an impressive and wonderful individual, and you've got so much like fabulous work in your portfolio. But it kind of showcases that like at the beginning of your project, there's still some unknowns for you, um, and you have to work through and kind of see how things feel rather than just like waving a magic wand and ta da, here's a perfect piece, you know. So I yeah. think that's great. <laughs> We get to yeah. see it. Yes, you're seeing all of that, the struggle that I go through sometimes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so I'm going to just attempt to, I think because her pants are like so, uh, in my head, like kind of straight going down, they're not very like flared or anything. I think her top, I'm going to make it a bit more like wider, if that makes sense. Yeah, nice. Add a little more contrast know. with the slimness of the pants. I guess you could say for sure but we'll see but that's what i'm most likely going to do for hers we'll have this kind of outfit. carol pearl is talking about how yeah she agrees masking is different um in photoshop and illustrator even though the it's the same principle um right. so yeah it can just be you know whatever whatever comes to you naturally whatever feels good to you to do um, is probably um, kind of the best way to do things. Um, I think that, like I said before, there's so many ways to um, complete a task in the Adobe Suite that sometimes um, it's, I think it, every once in a while a client will say, use this program or I need this file end product from you, you know? Um, but for the most part, you can really kind of choose how you're going to you're going to finish the project and, and solve the problem, right? I was just talking last week. I don't know how you feel about this, um, uh, Monica, but I, I kind of think that a lot of creating art is like problem solving, um, you know, just figuring out like you're doing right now, figuring out what you want to create and then solving the problem of like, how do I present this in the way that feels best and what tools and techniques do I use? So it's all about solving the problem your way. Exactly, yes. So this is where this girl's at. She has some stuff going on. We're gonna change up her hair. Um, I'm gonna do lighting, I think, at the very end, once we have the different girls, you know, their outfits together. So this is, you know, how the layers are, you know, since I just know how I want the, like, cut of the hair, if I wanna change, to say I wanted to oh, change perfect. her hair to, you know, I want her to have a different kind of, like, you know, bang style, if that makes sense, I can just move the, her face layer mm -hmm. so, and that gives you a completely different like hairline oh yeah that um, is so efficient that is so cool <laughs> that's how i'm doing that um I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's helpful to explain right now yeah i think that's just like that one the move movement of a single point does give like a whole new vibe to the kind of hair and hairline that you're doing and i i think maybe my first instinct would probably have been to um create the hair layer above it but i think maybe next time i do something like that i will probably do it the way that you're doing because this is super efficient yeah Um, can you store patterns to be used for making uh, techniques, uh, ma for masking techniques in Illustrator like you can in Photoshop? Um, you know, I, uh, I'm not, do you know, uh, Monica? What was the question again? Can you store? Can you store patterns to be used for masking techniques in Illustrator like you can in Photoshop? Oh, um... I believe so, but I don't know for sure because I, I don't really use, I rarely use patterns in Illustrator. Um, 
I don't know if it's the same, like, like you're talking about when you click on it and you can do the pattern overlay type thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm a lot less familiar with the patterning specifically in Illustrator because I am a Photoshop gal through and through. Um, so I am yeah. not 100% sure. I don't want to give you a wrong answer, but there may be somebody in chat who knows a specific answer to that. Um, and if not, I bet you uh, we could get a link to the, um, the forums and somebody on the forums will know. Um, yeah. let's see, somebody, Lindsay is saying, if you make a vector logo or art in Photoshop, what's the best way to deliver that file to a client? That's a, that's a great question. What, what sort of, um, information could you share, um, Monica about like how you have shared files with clients in the past doing vector work? Um, so a lot of times it depends on what the client wants, like what format they're asking for. A lot of times I'll ask them what format do you need this in mm -hmm. so that I know how to save it out. Um, because that's usually what will determine how I'm going to deliver it. Mm -hmm. If it's a vector, if they want something that's like vector and they want to be able to edit it themselves. Um, I mean, I usually send, most of the times I send clients, you know, like the final JPEGs and then they'll ask for the PSD files or the Illustrator files and mine are usually PSD files, Photoshop files. Mm -hmm. um, so I can just send it to them like that. But I would always just ask them what they want specifically. That's Perfect. Really just kind of give you an idea of what you're, what, what's required instead of just trying to play a guessing game and sending them whatever, and then having that not, not be what they, what they need. Um, yeah, it's really, uh, yeah, it depends on what they need. Cause I think it changes so much, um, depending on what they're using the files for also. Also Cody bear has posted the support forum for illustrators. So if you guys like to take a check, uh, uh, on that, um, and see if you can find any, um, technical, technical answers to technical questions. That um, is a really great link. Uh, and then also I know somebody asked um, earlier um, if you do a lot of um, printing yourself um, and if you prepare all of your files for the possibility of print um, while you're like when you start them. I, um, I don't do the printing myself. I have a printer that I use that does a really good job with the colors. Mm -hmm. um, and so but I, if I, so I'm, if I'm doing a project for something that's going to be in print, like for a magazine, newspaper, or for like a, you know, book, I'll make sure that I start the project in CMYK because the colors are so different. Mm -hmm. And so if I don't, then I'll be like working with all these like crazy colors and then I'll convert it and it'll look so different. Um, I could even maybe try to give you guys, this is like a, this is the end piece of this other piece mm -hmm. from times. So if I were to convert it to CMYK, which it might take a second, you'll see it should, the colors will, might be quite different. It's red, so reds might not change as much, but let's see what it does. A lot of times the lighting or just certain things will not look the same, but yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've had that happen to me actually before because I did a series of paintings. Um, oh, I can see it kind of grayed it. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, a lot less grayer and like these aren't as dark, you know, the greens, aren't, certain things aren't as vibrant. Reds usually stay pretty well, like yeah. usually stay nice in, um, but like if I wanted to go into like some certain vibrant colors, some vibrant colors, like this looks really bright here, but look at, this is how it would look in CMYK um, when I'm printing it, you know? Oh, wow. So, and like even like purple, it's like oh, it's not vibrant, vibrant purple, but this is what it's going to look like. So it's really good to, uh, start your file, you know, even this green, you know, the difference in the colors is quite different. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I made that mistake. Um, I went to print prints for a convention once and I had painted like all of my paintings in RBG. Um, and then I, yeah. I printed it out and I was like, why do they look like this? Like what is going on? Um, and then that's when I realized, oh my gosh, I had to go into, luckily they had Photoshop like at the print shop there. And I actually was able to go and com like convert it to CMYK and then edit the colors there. But yeah, sometimes it is like a super huge difference. Right, exactly. It is. It's crazy. So I enjoy working in RGB the most because I love vibrant things. Like I love seeing like this is so vibrant and it like gives me energy. Mm -hmm. Even though it's definitely hard on the eyes, um, it is. I love it. I think but... sometimes like a little bit of like loud 
craziness with color can sometimes be like really acceptable if it's done in a tasteful manner you know so I say like more power to you like keep experimenting because um, if you can make it work it's always super cool <laughs> exactly that's always the goal to make it work um, okay I'm gonna maybe I'll come back to this design and start the others and then we'll balance them all out I'm trying to decide how I want the because usually I start with the background color, but today I'm gonna do that I think towards the end. Mm -hmm. Um I want to do one of them. Uh, Artie tip. Chick says such a good tip about remembering CMYK for print. Yes, I agree. Yeah, it's crazy the difference that you'll see. Um, Claire, a lot of your work has distinct grainy look and texture to it. Is that just an overlay or is it a brush? That's what Claire is wondering. It's an overlay of a bunch of different things, but it's it is an overlay. So I have some like just uh, some color layers, and then I have a grain layer. But I usually have a few grain layers, and they're on different opacities. And I kind of change it depending on like the um, how I guess the color that I'm starting with. Mm -hmm. uh, I can open a file and kind of show you how because it's it also changes the look of something quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So. I can show you. Um, let's see. Sorry, you're seeing all my files. Like this one, you'll notice. This is very interesting. This is like a personal thing I did. Um, so oh, this is my, it, my my lighting layer. Mm -hmm. You'll notice I turn it off. Look how different that looks. Oh wow! So I've kind of gotten used to like designing in this shades, mm -hmm. and then knowing when I turn it on, it's going to be quite different. So I have to kind of like think differently when I'm using the colors. Um, like, you know, because if her skin tone, you know, changes completely too. And you want to make sure you get the, like the skin tone, right. That you're trying to work with, you know, depending on what person you're drawing. Yeah. Um, yeah. As you can see, you know, it's a few color layers, few color fills, few saturation and levels. And, you know, I kind of adjust those for depending on the project and depending on like what, how much I wanted to like stand out a certain way. That's um, awesome. I, I also like to do like kind of like illustrating in grayscale sometimes like for larger portions yes. like this and adding yeah, colors like a gray layer to see make sure the values are looking good and that always helps if your image feels like it's not working mm -hmm. sometimes you, know, you turn it to black and white you know take a solid color white and put it on the color layer and then it'll show the values really well for you I actually have if you're interested I have um, like a trick that will actually make turning your piece to grayscale and back again as simple as using a hotkey um so oh. yeah like um yeah. if i and i've showed it before um if you there's like a um a an area in view um uh, at the top of your photoshop if you go in and change the um custom proof setup like yeah it says proof setup and then if you hit custom and then uh, where it says device to simulate if you set it to working dot gray 20 percent right there like right underneath yeah, oh, okay. right there and then hit okay now when you hit control y um, it will go back and forth between grayscale but you're still working in color so it'll always be in color and then if you just want to check your values real quick you can just hit Control y real quick and it will bump it so it's going back and forth between your um original setting to just a quick grayscale over and over again so it'll let you do that without because i used to do like a color fill layer over the top um mm -hmm. and sometimes i would forget that i had that color fill layer and i would start working in gray uh, and then I would turn the color fill layer off and realize that I put all this beautiful detail, but it's all in grayscale um, yeah. and, and get a little confused. So if that works for you, um, you know, not required to use it, but if it works for right. you, it definitely work for me. So, yeah. yes, that does help. I know that I knew I was, so what I was just doing a second ago, so I want to get back to this was, so I know when I was, I, when I was working at DreamWorks, one of the other artists, when I first started had told me about this, you know, colorful thing. And they mm -hmm. had told me that certain ways to turn into black and white don't show, show the true value. So I was trying to see if it was the same, but this one looks like, see how this background, the difference between our hair mm -hmm. and the background right now, you can't really see that mm -hmm. when I do this way, but this way it shows it a lot more distinct. Oh, okay, okay. 
So I oh, think that yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, I don't know what is the reason why these are like, why they're different, but I know that's something that someone told me and I wish I could remember the reasoning, but that's why I always did the color film. But I don't, I think it was like, it shows the true values and I don't know why it wouldn't show it the other way. I think maybe the way it converts it. Maybe it, it you know what, that's actually something, maybe I'll do some, uh, some serious re- research yeah. into that and see why they are different. And, um, yeah. and maybe somebody in chat, maybe somebody in chat knows now where somebody could like post up. Maybe it, it just happens to do, happens to be about like the 20% on that working dot gray. Um, uh, maybe yeah, uh, that could be it. But I would love yeah to know which one is the most accurate and um, which one is actually better for the art piece to use. Um, I didn't even I've right. never even actually thought about that, and I've been using it for so many years. So that's awesome that you brought that up. Yeah, I didn't know. I like I'm like I just remember that happening, and I'm being like, oh, interesting. I would have never thought that mm-hmm. thing, but so I'm doing this jacket thing on her really fast to see what I what it looks like kind of I'll probably have to adjust it to fit her to make it look crazier but right now I'm just kind of getting the shape in there um because I want to see um Cody Bear also uses the color fill layer wonderful oh cool for the black and white thing yeah yeah okay I'm going to scroll through here and make sure I'm catching um, everybody's questions. Um, I see Addicted Designer is saying, can anyone give me any tips to grow on Behance? Um, I think Addicted Designer, um, one of the one of the best things that you can employ when it comes to working and posting your work on Behance is making sure that you identify your projects properly. Um, because I have um, seen a lot of people post projects um, like in our community discord for Adobe Live and just sharing their Behance projects with me. Um, and then when I try to return to them previously, if I forgot to favorite them, for example, um, when I search for it, I can't find it. And it's usually because uh, those creators didn't take the time to go through and tag their work properly and put it into the right category and all that. And there's a lot of extensive settings that you can uh, change when it comes to posting your work on Behance. Um, and if you can get the projects like in line with everything about them so they pop up in the proper spaces, more people will see it. You have a lot more visibility on your work. Um, and then I would say uh, you could also jump into doing the daily creative challenges, um, which we are going to have going on and we're going to review actually tomorrow. Um, the daily creative challenges are for Adobe XD, for Photoshop, for Illustrator, and then every once in a while we have like a surprise daily creative challenge for one of the other apps. Um, and they're a really great way not only to hone your skill and to scrub up on some of the basics, um, but since we actually share them in our Discord and a lot of people in the community are uh, involved in taking a look at everybody else's projects and giving feedback um, and sharing those around, I think that projects dedicated to those challenges typically get a lot of eyes that maybe um, a, a beginner who's new to Behance would not normally get. Like they get a lot more attention because everyone's avidly looking to see other people's challenge entries. Um, so that's also a good way. Um, and then speaking of the challenge, you guys can also figure out what the challenge uh, for Photoshop, for XD, and for Illustrator currently um, is if you just go to the landing pages respectively. So if you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, or slash XD or whichever you're looking for, you'll be able to find what our current challenge is. Yeah. Um, and Claire DeRosa says, when you're adding shading to faces, Monica, do you use vectors as well? Um, I assume that means uh, as opposed to maybe painting in a texture or something like that. I do, yes. Um, so for the lighting, like this girl, she doesn't have much lighting on her, mm-hmm. but like, the highlights on her cheek and stuff. Um, these are all, sorry, let me get out of here. 
bottle is. Oh, wow. But um, this is a layer. I mean, even her lips, you know, oh, I just lost it. Let me unlock it. Um, you know, oops. this is, you know, they're all, all layers in here. Every little thing that you see is a layer or yeah, as a shape. There's oh, a lot wow. of shapes that are very subtle and like I, you know, turn the opacity down so that they show up a certain way. Now, this is overlaid on there, um, but that adds that lighting. And, you know, there's a shape here, there's a shape there. There's the main shape of her lips and there's the shape for, you know, underneath her lips to show that. Um, that so I, so do, cool. I do use shapes and, you know, say like, this is gonna be really rough, but say I wanted to uh, add some lighting really quickly on top of her. I'm just gonna like put her into one layer really fast. Um, this is a lot why I usually, you know, the masking tool or whatever, but you know, you could do like whatever this whole thing and I'm just gonna draw on her like that. Mm -hmm. I would do this kind of thing. And then I would lay it like that and then do, you know, some kind of lighting, you know. Oh, that's so crazy, cool. But that's kind of how I do it. Mm -hmm. um, and if I didn't want it to show on her earring, cause you know, the earring shouldn't be having that light on it, you know, the same way I would, as you know, I would make it so the earrings not in this group of layers, but that's, that is uh, the way it's done. It's a bunch of, bunch of layers. That's so of cool. Layers. I honestly, like looking at this piece, I think initially I would have assumed that you painted it with brush tools. Um, oh, yeah, because I think you, I think you flow like your colors and your light and your shadows, all those highlights and everything are so soft. They really feel like brush strokes to me. And I think that is such a unique part of your style um, and your art presentation because um, I don't think I've seen like vector work quite like that, that has that like soft, like subtle, like, you know, like you made a character and, and it looks like skin and it feels soft rather than like clean edges that I expect from vector work, um, which is really, really fascinating. Yeah, it's all, it's all a different layer. I think I'm gonna leave her arm a different color. Um, yeah, it's all a bunch of bunch of layers. I, I don't have a steady enough hand to do the painting version because I like such clean lines and stuff. I think so. Mm -hmm. That's only way I can like, control it and stuff enough for me. Maybe that might be the reason why I do it that way. The shot you know, is going crazy, by the way. They are like blown away. Everyone's like, wow, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's 100% vectors. That is so impressive. Oh. Like everyone's freaking out right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. yeah, that's my life. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to make this look solid. Close that scope of my day. Um, George says, do you use Fresco to start a project and then finish it up in Photoshop? Have you used Fresco for like vector illustrations before? Not yet. I'm actually going to be t testing it out this week, later this week, because I do want to see how it will like change my workflow and maybe help it, you know, move a little faster at some points. Um, nice. I have Fresco. I don't know. Can they, can you do like the pen tool in Fresco? Does anyone know that? They so in Fresco we have um, live brushes that do a lot of really interesting live simulations, like the watercolor brushes that seem to bleed with like real water and mix around and everything. Um, and then we have like the regular pixel brushes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we have like the regular pixel brushes, similar to like the brushes that we have um, in Photoshop that you might use to paint. And then we have vector brushes. Um, so the vector brushes, you can you can draw and sketch and everything with them, um, but every stroke creates a vector shape. Um, so you would oh, be working okay. in vector and then you could, if you wanted to um, work like that for a time and do some like illustrating, but vector illustrations there, you could also save to create a cloud and then just open it up in Photoshop and have all of your individual like vector pieces and everything sorted already. And then just start doing your, your usual workflow in Photoshop. Oh, wow. Okay. Then I should, yeah, I'm excited to try that. I'll be trying it later this week is the plan I'm giving well, her to you weird things on this her leg i don't know i feel like she needs something down here so some pizzazz some pizzazz mm -hmm. yeah something so good. i'm interested to know too like you have in your portfolio like a collection of really 
fabulous style. Um, and I'm wondering like where that love of like fashion and everything comes from. Are you just like kind of like, cause I feel like you are like wonderfully stylish, just like mm-hmm. on your own, like by yourself without like the art and everything. And so I'm wondering if like fashion is a passion of yours. Um, and if that's something that you've just been into for a while, um, or like kind of when you got into that sort of thing. Um, so I guess for me, fashion, uh, I think, I mean, I've always liked fashion since I was a child. I, li- I liked shoes a lot when I was really young. I would, mm-hmm. you know, like have my mom take me to the shoe store so I could just look at shoes all day. Like I wouldn't want, I didn't care if I bought anything. I just like to look at the designs of the shoes. Wow. I don't know why that came about, but it was from a very young age. I liked looking at clothes and shoes was a big thing and like the different designs of them and just like the shapes of like how everything can be a shoe but it's all these different versions mm-hmm. um so I don't know I mean I'm tr- I think I like clothing and stuff because it's like you can it mixes you know pattern texture silhouette and color mm-hmm. and you get to wear it and walk around and it's like you get to design a piece like almost like a little design every day based on what you decide to wear um that's so cool and I think that I also <laughs> like to like I'm like a Pisces I like to daydream like it's like oh today I'm gonna be like this character so I'm gonna wear this kind of outfit um that's yeah, awesome I that's really I've awesome been big into fashion since I was young and I think I just I love how crazy they can get with everything and it's just so interesting to me it's like the whimsical world of people yeah I really like specifically you said something specific about shoes and that was that you were really um interested in the fact that so many different kinds of things with different shapes and different textures and patterns could all be a shoe um and i think that's so cool because when you you can apply that to like graphic art and everything it's just like like even if you're just creating like uh social media promos it's like maybe there's not you know there's like a backbone of what a promo or a graphic piece should have but like you can go so many different directions with it and they can all be this kind of graphic piece you know um i thought that was unique that you had said that because i didn't even really think about that when it comes to fashion but you're right like there are so many rules that can be broken and so many different ways to approach one singular concept Um, and that's really cool so interesting to me. Chris Olson says, yay, Pisces. <laughs> I want to know what everybody's sign is. I'm a Virgo. So we got a Virgo, a couple of Pisces. What are um, people saying? I'm so curious. I'm gonna, look, we have like a, like maybe like a 15 second delay about. So okay. they'll hear the question in a bit and then it'll start like going through. Also, Cody Bear is reminding us we've got 45 minutes till we're going to be doing portfolio reviews. Yes, indeed. Um, so post your Behance. A link to you like your Behance portfolio to the portfolio reviews channel in uh, the Photoshop Discord. And um, Cody Bear has posted a link uh, in the chat where you can access that Discord. Um, and then uh, for those of you who are watching today and you're over on YouTube, please head over to behance.net slash live because that is where we are looking at the chat. That's where we are getting all of the questions um, from members of chat who are hanging out with us today. Um, and it is also where our moderators are posting all of the helpful links so if you're looking around for links I'm talking about being posted and you're like where the heck are these things um, it's probably because you're on YouTube and not Behance um, oh here we go we've got uh, uh, Cancer Gemini's Aquarius Aries uh, more Gemini's Libra's Leo's a lot of Gemini's and Libra's uh, in the chat today uh, Mia is also a Pisces though Oh, cool. Very cool. Cody Bear is a Taurus. Nice. Very, very cool. I don't see any more Virgos. Where am a Virgo fam at, huh? Where are the Virgos at? Yeah, holla at you, girl. Let me know you're there. They're probably, honestly, knowing Virgos, they're probably all hibernating, not yeah. really participating, just, like, sitting back and watching everyone do <laughs> do what they're going to do. Yeah. Right skulking in the shadows like Virgos often do. Um, <laughs> we got a Scorpio. Oh yeah, what's up, Danielle? 
we got we had like a like a flurry of like three different Scorpios that just jumped in at one time. I think they're all they're all like running in a squad together. They just were like, we're here. <laughs> here we go. We're here, don't worry. Mm-hmm. So now I'm trying to figure out the last girl. I'm trying to look at these two and see what like feels right, which would be probably like something kind of like this because like you know she has the long skinny-ish pants she has like a shorter wider outfit so i need something to kind of balance it all out i might switch the placement of them at the end maybe but i haven't decided okay so uh, you're trying to like balance um the different like, weights and heights of things mm-hmm, like the awesome. overall silhouette so like yeah because like i'm looking at more yeah the silhouettes of everything and what you know feels right i don't want them to all be like too similar in shape and size of their outfits and proportion nice finally we got a virgo in chat what's up krista thank you thank you (laughs) here to represent i appreciate it um let's see i'm kind of just like really taking in all the different things i love um uh i think you just like like hid them real quick but i know you had like the little wraps around the legs of that first yeah, one yeah. that were so subtle and so cute um that's really interesting yeah. i don't know if that was from like the previous concept or if it was the new but yeah it's the previous one so i i was t- i took it out for now and i think i've done it for a few of my designs maybe so i might not do it for a while okay i'm also like like i don't like so this is kind of like when i'm when I'm getting dressed, I like to create new outfits. Like I don't like to wear the same combination of clothing twice if I can avoid it. Mm-hmm. Obviously in quarantine that has been an exception, but um, so I guess maybe my designs, like when I'm doing these girls, I try to almost challenge myself to find new ways to, like just new designs, new composition, new outfits that I, so I try to not let myself do the same thing too much. Like I've done these shoes a lot and I think I need to start doing some new shoes, but for now we'll keep them. Okay. So that's why I turned those those uh, bands around her legs off. I had done them so much before. Yeah, I have a bad habit of like using the same textures to like finish off a painting um, all mm-hmm. the time, and I realize after a while I'm like, ah, maybe I should try something else just so that I'm not getting into the habit of like always putting the same noise texture on. I have like one noise texture from True Grit Texture Co. that I use almost every single painting and I'm like maybe I should not do this yeah like I switch it with also Grizel says I would really like to know how long it was to um finish the other illustration so the portrait that you um oh, were showing yeah. us yeah from from start to finish about how long did did something like that take you with all those intricate layers of vectors um huh this one I did um late at night one night mm-hmm. so this will really change some of the colors too much uh i want to think i was really in the zone because i was i was in a bad mood so i was like i need to do an art piece and i i hadn't done earrings like this before so i was like i'm just gonna like focus on the earrings the earrings probably took the longest i want to say because like trying to get them to look like that was a difficult challenge i mean i don't know maybe like three to five hours wow maybe. I honestly don't remember. I don't because I don't remember if I started it and finished it in one night. I can't remember that. Like I know I started it really late at night, like around like eleven or twelve, mm-hmm. and stayed up for quite a while to do it. Um, and then I probably like touched it up in the morning and added a few extra layers of lighting. But yeah, that's maybe three to four because I'm doing a lot of finicky things, trying to make sure I like it, turning layers on and off. Um, I think I honestly would have guessed that it would have taken you a lot longer than that because it's so detailed and everything is like placed so wonderfully. Um, so I'm really impressed. That's a, that's a, a, I think a pretty fantastic amount of work, um, for that amount of time. And it looks so good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It just really depends on how quickly I end up getting to something I like. Sometimes, you know, things will take quite a bit longer, sometimes a lot faster, um, and maybe I don't feel like I need all certain details in there. I might not add as many details. Mm-hmm. That's another thing, you know, with projects, if I have less time on something, I'll, you know, take out certain details so that we're still getting the visual that we want and showing what we need to show, but it might not get as many layers of details because we don't have the time for that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, uh, Jessica Perez says, Monica, did you go to school for design and illustration? 
So I went to school actually for animation and then took some design classes. I went to USC mm -hmm. and I was in their school. Um, I was in their film school um, studying animation. So, and then I started to realize I kind of wanted to try out design. So I took some classes like color classes, like learning how to mix paints and which is what made me get really interested in color and design. Um, but I also, you know, I, I interned at DreamWorks Animation and worked there after I graduated. And I had a lot of mentors there that mm -hmm. taught me so many, like so much. Um, you know, I'd meet with them consistently and, you know, bring them back updates and then get feedback and, you know, ask questions of like why they think this needs to be changed. So I can just like understand the thinking of what makes a design stronger. Um, so that was kind of where a lot of this came from is a combination of schooling and then mentors that taught me and guided me and you know encouraged nice. me to play around you know which is what helped me develop my style is by playing around yeah just getting creative and trying different things and seeing what happens yeah i haven't decided what i want to do with this girl i don't like that yet um let's see uh, somebody says, let me scroll up, um, Stacy Kameen says, as a hardcore illustrator user, it just blows my mind watching this all happen in Photoshop. And then there's some uh, other, like, big time illustrator users who are like, yes, us too. We are also freaking oh. out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I didn't realize that people didn't use the, I thought that it was really common that people use Photoshop and vectors, I guess. I'm the uh, out of you know the what do you call it out of the loop yeah out of the loop the I, one. I'm I like you started. though yeah but you are <laughs> yeah yeah I'm like you is I I I know how to do some things in illustrator um and uh I, like I'm not a complete stranger to it but if I was gonna do a whole project in illustrator I would need to have um my google up on the other you know page and kind of like go through it and make sure that i like yeah you know, i would have to like note down some hotkeys like to get through and f and figure it out um wow. but photoshop is like my bread and butter so if i do any project i'm gonna figure out a way to make it happen um in photoshop and so anytime i've ever had to use like vector shapes and everything um i've always just found a way to do it in photoshop so uh, we're kind of in the same boat where it's like that's what i'm comfortable using that's what i love using um and because there's vectors in there if i've got to do it then that's where it happens uh, so but still sometimes people are like why are you making shapes in photoshop when there's illustrator and i'm like because oh. it's what i want <laughs> Right. I mean, like I definitely started using them in Illustrator. That's why I started with vectors. And then I think as I would notice myself always switching, like saving things and then going to Photoshop and then being like, oh, I need to go back to Illustrator. I was like, let me just do it all in Illustrator. Hmm. Or sorry, let me just do it all in Photoshop. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah, cause I would always want to return to Photoshop um, to maybe brush in some textures or like throw in some some image textures or um, to add like some cool gradients and things. And I think maybe some of that stuff you can still do in Illustrator, but I'm so familiar with it in Photoshop and I'm so comfortable with it that um, I would never, I don't think that I would be comfortable finishing a project in Illustrator. I would always want to return to Photoshop um, to get those final details. So I might as well do it in Photoshop for me. But yeah. that's not, you know, that, that doesn't mean that that is how it works for everybody. Like there may be people in chat who are like, no, boo, just work in Illustrator. That's all I can do. That's what I want. And that's yeah. totally cool. You know, everybody has their own workflow. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with this girl's hair because it doesn't feel right. I don't know. I'm loving all these big shapes and new colors coming in though. Like, this is really yeah, kinda, cool. I'm experimenting a little more than I usually do with these girls with their, you know, the colors are a lot crazier in terms of like each outfit has a lot of colors on it. Uh, I think you're really inspiring a lot of folks in chat though because um, not only are they like super blown away by like all the layers and stuff in the vector and like your process but even Carol Pearl is saying this kind of project would be so different for me but I may have to try it and I'm kind of feeling the same way um, where I don't usually like build a lot of 
characters and things in this particular like with this particular method but I think that I might even also want to really test this out and then kind of use my own technique of like painting just within all the individual shapes I think hmm. could be fun yeah, um, exactly. so yeah <laughs> I think you are definitely um creating some vector shaped monsters in the chats hey. uh, Monica <laughs> yeah you are converting us all I love it um, Claire says, do you use drawing a drawing tablet or just your computer mouse or um, if you're using so many vectors? I use a, so I have a, ta a pen. Yeah, I use a drawing tablet. Um, sometimes like right now when I was just like playing around with her uh, hair, I was using the mouse, but mm -hmm. I typically use my, my uh, drawing tablet. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm also, a, I'm a stylist girl myself. Um, yeah. And I've actually met a lot of designers who are like very specifically like trackpad only. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, it's like I couldn't do that. I could I never. Slower, I guess, yeah, I go a lot slower if I'm just using my trackpad. So I, uh, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, it's a, that would be a little wild for me, but yeah, I've met tons of people who are just like, yeah, I only use a trackpad. I've even met people who do like um, subtle illustration in their in their graphic design, and they're still just like tracing stuff with a finger on the trackpad, and then that's like how they're drawing. And I'm like, how does that work? And I can't remember who it was, but um, she said to me like it comes naturally and I'm just using my finger. So like how, like I'm just drawing it how I think it should be drawn. Um, and I'm like, but if you draw, like wouldn't you just use a stylus and draw like you draw with a pencil? And she <laughs> says, I actually draw better with like just my finger on the trackpad. I'm like, what? This is bizarre. That's very interesting. <laughs> That's crazy huh? to me. Yeah, I could not, I would, it would just take me, oops, it would take me a lot longer. Yeah, I'd be totally lost. Okay, what time is it? How much time? In we have like 30 minutes? Yeah, we, we have 30 minutes till the portfolio reviews. Um, and then we'll review portfolios for like roughly 15 minutes. Um, and then we will we will still return and do like a recap and show the work. And you can maybe do another couple of things depending on how much time we have left before we say goodbye. Um, and then yeah, Cody in with the, uh, with the update rem reminder there um in half an hour yes we will be doing uh, uh the portfolio reviews um if you join the um community discord you can submit your portfolios um into the portfolio review tab um we're going to choose a couple of those um and review and give a little bit of feedback on work and presentation and things like that towards the end um, Lindsay Palmer saying, I have drawn on the trackpad with a stylus before. It worked a bit better for me than just my finger on the trackpad. That is interesting. So you kind of used uh, it like a little mini Wacom tablet. That's uh, what, yeah, is that what she said? Yeah, that's what, she, I think that's what she's saying. That's really interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's see. I'll add some lighting. I'm trying to, I don't love the colors. I'll show you guys how I kind of add lighting on them. There's a few ways I do it. Um, we can do it. Let me save this as a separate file before I get. So like, yeah, whenever I'm about to make like a bigger change and I'm like, just in case I make it worse, mm -hmm. I save a, a new thing. A new version, perfect. Yeah, so that I can always go back to what I liked. I I used to save like multiple versions of my work, but I started getting like too crazy with it till I had like 12 versions of oh, yeah. pieces. So what I started doing was um, I would take everything in my file and I would group it together mm. um, and then I would duplicate that group I do that um, and like convert it to a smart object. Um, because if I convert okay. it to smart object, then I can always convert it back to the layers. Um, and then it yeah. just kind of, you know, like compresses everything. And then I have like it listed in my file, like version one, two, three, and so on. Oh, I like that. I'm about to, that's what I was about to do is make these into a smart file so that I can do the lighting. Cause that's usually, um, one of the ways I do lighting is by putting them into the smart file. Nice. So sometimes I do all of them in one. I think I can for these, I think, well, we'll do them separately. It'll just be more layers. 
Let's start with. Uh, and then let's see. Um, Andre is saying, how much of your work is planned to uh, start to end? Do you end up with what you pictured at the start? Um, or is it more of an experimentation um, sort of process? Um, more of an experimentation. Like this one, I had no clue what I was going to create. I just knew I wanted to create these three girls and try new shapes. Mm -hmm. um, for the portraits, if I'm drawing something specific, I, I, that one will be kind of like I know how I want it to look in the end. I won't, I'm not, not going to know like every little layer of lighting that I'm going to need to add. You know, I might need to like, I might think I'm going to add a layer for lighting very similar here, but then I'll realize that it requires like three or four layers to create that lighting on mm -hmm. her cheek. So that'll change, you know. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm kind of the same way. I have like, I have like an idea that I like whenever I sit down to make uh, a, a painting, like a, like usually a portrait, because I'm predominantly dealing like making portraits. Mm -hmm. um, and I have an idea for what I want. And I usually have either like you have like all of your reference in a file folder in my file um, right. in Photoshop, or um, I have like a large Pinterest board that I will like like I have like all these different super in-depth Pinterest boards and I'll just open them all up in different tabs and be cycling through yeah, my right. reference that way um, or a collection of both um, right. and I will start out with like a composition and like a concept idea but most of the time by the end of the painting um, it's like completely like wildly different from what I originally had in my head and that's cool but like if you do that and then maybe if some of you folks in chat do that sometimes sometimes it's a little bit frustrating to me because i'm just like why can i never just put what's in my brain on the canvas right. <laughs> it turns different every time it's not showing up the way i wanted to yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so i added my little adjust my little lighting thing on here to get that texture and to kind of like I call it like sweetening the like sweetening the colors together, like making them feel like a little more cohesive, because mm -hmm. they're all kind of being, you know, with this, they're all being kind of pushed into a slightly closer of a, like family group, like they're all a little warmer, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like I like that a little better. To, and so that's what I kind of just did there. Um, a lot of times with these girls, I don't use that, but today I am. Steve so, Festus Kasaboom says, I love how when watching streams here, I think, okay, last week was really awesome. How can they top that? And then along comes an artist like Monica. Aww. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So for her lighting, I don't know what I want to do, but it's going to be really simple. I mean, and for these, like, because they're such weird characters, I don't really pay attention that much to, like, realistic lighting, if that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. it is somewhat, but... Uh, it's definitely not like what do you call it correct a lot of the time the lighting that I do on these girls it's sometimes just like lighting mm -hmm. just add some fun to it is what I guess I would call it well they're a little a little abstract so I think a little <laughs> abstract lighting and 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 shadows is probably necessary um, yeah. so that's that sounds good to me that sounds uh, like a like a good approach yeah so we're now so i made these layers i put it into a smart layer mm -hmm. a smart smart object and then i made some layers that once i use the um a masking tool mm -hmm. uh it'll give me certain levels of layers but keep her in there where I, I can go back and edit it so you know i just made this shape i'll use i'll hold on i think uh I'll command and i'll click on it and it'll you know create that selection that i just made with that um what do you call it? Pen tool? Oh yeah, that's one of my favorite little hotkeys is just to be able to hold command, click the layer icon, and then everything on that layer is selected for me. I love it. Yeah. And then this I'm also so then I just like deleted that to add some lighting and then I'm gonna try to see if I can do this. Um see if I need to do it differently. This one that there's that but that's oh, you know nice um looking but once i you know erase a little more it'll have a little bit of that going on so oh that's yeah i think so now i'm gonna do the dark side of it um dark side of her or whatever add some dark whatever you want to call it on this side it's kind of dramatic yeah some uh 
random. Some shadows in there and kind of, oh yeah. This is really, really unique the way that this is coming together. Um, and it's also like so much quicker than I imagined because like when you were kind of describing to us like the process and how long it took you for the previous portrait, I was like, I told you, I was thinking it was going to take you like way longer um, uh, than, than you had said. Um, but now I kind of see why, because you really get in there and just go to town with that pen tool. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> yeah, I go to town. I think I'll make this a little bit darker so that it's not as much contrast. Like, there's her. She looks interesting. Stacy, ooh, Stacy's saying this is usually the part of Illustrator that she can't do, and now right. it makes sense to her. So, mm -hmm. awesome, Stacy. <laughs> uh, and if I want her to blend into the background more, I would, like, you know, erase this and she's, like, disappearing a little, but I don't think we need to do that maybe on the edge of her but we'll keep it like that for now so this is you know the left girl mm -hmm. and then we'll go and do this girl she's all in her layer cool. that the like the peach and orange colors and all of the different shades from like green to that yellowish green on that first girl are like they look so delicious to me like yeah, it's, it. I love it. It's like so pleasing, but it could be like they could be like savory vegetable colors, but then it could also be like tart sweet colors too, and just like a lot of warmth, and that makes it so attractive to me to look at because I love those yeah. colors together. Yeah, at first it was like I was like, is that gonna work? But it it did. Once I like yeah added that, it kind of feels like it works together now. Um, and that's another thing is like sometimes like I don't know you might not think these colors would look good together but once you add a little bit of things on them and I don't know balance them out with certain sizes of colors it, it ends up working out yeah yeah um Chris says they're like popsicle colors that's a cool way to think about it that's neat yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, Carol is saying masking, um, is so much simpler in Photoshop. Um, yeah, for me, definitely. Uh, and then Lindsay, Lindsay says, so I am a little confused. Will this file actually produce vector art or does the finished pro will the finished product be rasterized? Does Photoshop suddenly produce vector files? So, um, when is she talking about like, I mean, it's gonna, so like I can resize this composition to any size I want. If I wanted to print this at like eight feet by eight feet, because mm -hmm. I created it with vectors, it can scale to any size. I just go to image, image size and scale it. And because it's made with vectors and I haven't saved it as a JPEG, if I were to save it as a JPEG, obviously it's gonna flatten it. Mm -hmm. But since I'm making it with vectors, it can be scaled. The Photoshop file can be scaled to any size. So you can save it out to print at any size. If that nice. makes sense. Yeah. That's what she's asking. Um, yeah, I, I don't so. know if it's SVG. I don't know if she's wondering about that. I don't know if you can do that in here, but I don't see that option, I don't think. But I know I could bring this into, you know, Illustrator if I had to, and I would probably just like have to do the textures differently. Mm -hmm. uh, but anytime, you know, somebody, I want something at a different size or if I need to resize it, I just have to have the Photoshop file so that we can do that. And then scale it up or down and boom, there it is. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and then let's see, Chris is saying, so cool how organic and cohesive the vector shapes become. I agree. Uh, and then let me, I'm just look, kind of scrolling through making sure I haven't missed anything important, like pressing questions. Mm -hmm. um, I use my iPad Pro like a Wacom, but with Fresco or Photoshop, says Lindsay not familiar with the programs that Chris mentioned. Yeah, I, I actually do um, that a lot as well. Um, many of my own illustrations now, since I started using Fresco, they begin in Fresco and I just save them to my Creative Cloud files. And then when I open up Photoshop, it's right there on my main Photoshop page. Um, so I can just jump in and it's, yeah, it's been really cool because I, I do have a Cintiq that I work on. I don't know if you're on a tablet or a, a Cintiq, uh, Monica. I'm on a um, I have a Wacom tablet and then oh, my gotcha. laptop. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but definitely, like, for me, like, having the, and I have, I don't have, like, a fancy Cintiq, it's just, like, the small, like, 13 HD, and it's the older model, too. Um, so it's, like, tiny, and it's kind of, like, the size of, like, a larger iPad, so being able to work on that when I'm at my desktop, and then being able to work, um, on the iPad when I'm in, you know, in Fresco and everything has been really cool, um, and it's been kind of a new, uh... I would say like a new level that I've like kind of achieved in my work, just being able to go back and forth from Fresco to Photoshop. So I'm super excited that you said you were going to test it out, um, Monica, yeah. because I, I like, I wish you the best of luck and I hope that you love it because it's such yeah. a cool thing. I'm excited. So here we are with this girl's little thing going on. Lindsay is saying thanks. So you're you're not necessarily producing the final images as vectors, but building it out with vectors for more flexibility. That sounds about right to me. Yeah, that's right. That sounds about right as well. Um, but Steve says that um, he thinks you can choose export under file okay. and then choose SVG, so you can get um, a a vector file. Um, let's see, Ex maybe export as. Yeah, probably. Let's see. That's what I'm assuming. Um, yeah, it's SVG. Data. There it is. It out. Amazing. I didn't know that. Perfect. I didn't know that. Oh, I'm excited. That's really good. You teach some, you learn some here on Adobe Live. I think every single stream that I've ever done, um, I've always like learned something from somebody in chat that I've never heard of before, which is such a cool thing because, um, there, like, like we talked about earlier, Monica, like there's so many different ways that you can do things in, um, the Adobe suite that almost like just about every stream, somebody has like a new technique or a new way of doing something I have done before, but never in that way. And I'm like, mind blown. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right. Did not know that was a thing. <laughs> Now I'm trying to get her mouth, her lips to show up a little better. So I'm changing the cover. There we go. So you just um, opened up like the the contents of the smart object then for yep. that girl. That is yep. really cool. And then I save it and it changes it in here so that I can yeah. change it to her design. So and you like, essentially just did like what people would do with a mock-up, like to add in stuff. Usually you would like click on a piece of a mock-up it'll say like your add your logo here or add your design here and then you'd open up that component of the smart object edit it save it and then it shows up in the final um uh collection and piece but basically she's doing this for illustration which is so cool um i don't think i've seen somebody do that for illustration before and i'm blown i'm blown away <laughs> oh yeah yeah, it's helpful. I, I don't know if I learned that before I worked at DreamWorks or if one of my supervisors showed it to me in terms of like, you know, because like when I was working in the studio, you have to make changes all the time, of course, but you want your files to be the size and be able to just make as many possible changes that may need to be done. And so having things in smart objects, yeah, like it, it's faster so that say these girls are all the same character and they all need to be changed. I don't have to go one by one and change them. I would just change that core file mm -hmm. and it would change all the girls in this like scene or something that I have um which is why that's a big thing because you know I could just do this all by duplicating her layer like this mm -hmm. but then if I wanted to change something on her I have to go through every single duplicate of her layer yeah yeah one core file if that's helpful for anyone yeah that's super helpful that's that's really um kind of a cool unique process too um uh, everyone is saying um, that they are excited, and then Jan um, or Jan uh, is saying uh, loves the shade, love the shade of purples, and I agree. Purple is my favorite color, and I am living for these purple shades as well. <laughs> yeah, I really like purple a lot. I really like purple. Also, we've got about 14 minutes before we switch over to doing some portfolio reviews. Um, and uh, when we do that, we'll go over, we're going to choose about two portfolios from the uh, community 
Um, if you would like a chance to have your portfolio chosen for review, um, all you have to do is join our Discord, the Photoshop Discord, which I can give you the link here. Ta-da! If you go to bit.ly slash PS Discord, making sure that P and that S are capitalized, you will go to the Photoshop Discord server. Um, you can post your portfolio uh, into the Portfolio Reviews channel on the left-hand side. Um, and like I said, a couple of them will be chosen so that we can review them and check them out. If you are looking for helpful links and more information on the portfolio reviews, but you're not seeing any of the links that I'm talking about in the chat or any of the comments I've been reading for that matter, it's probably because you're over on YouTube. Um, and if you're on YouTube, please head over to behance.net slash live because that is um, where all of our helpful resources are being shared. It's where all of our informational tabs are above the chat um, and it's also where uh, Monica and I are reading uh, the chat and and commenting on the uh, the comments people sent to us yeah sorry I'm changing this ghost shirt I think um, it's not working for me Lillian is saying not sure if uh, not sure how to ask this question but is there a way to get a color count for example if you were designing fabric and you were limited to a certain number of colors. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I think that there is actually, yeah. um, I have to, that is something I've had to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, so usually in that set case, I would choose the colors I'm going to use. And then I would only use those for the layers. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm limited to like five colors, you know, I'd have those five colors like in a corner here. Um, and then I'd make sure that I'm only choosing those, you know, I might design it like this and then I might be like, okay, I'll, I'll go back and like, like, okay, this will be that color. This will be those greens and make sure, you know, they're all their outfits will might have the same few colors, but they will be different parts of their outfit. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull up, um, the exact, I have actually done, <laughs> I think I've done that before where I just like pulled up all of the current colors, um, that are in my file. I don't know. think, um, but let me see. I really want her arm to stay a different color, but it might not work. I'm gonna hunt for a solution for this while you work, um, and. I won't leave you hanging, Lillian. I'll let you know if that's possible or not. I know that when I go to create a GIF, it gives me a little grid of all of the different colors that I'm currently using in my file, but I don't know that there's a way that you can go and just say like, here is um, all of your, uh, your colors that you're using right now. Um, let me see. have a simple more simple outfit oh yeah do you like that i guess um someone on the on the forums is saying if you uh, it says try using image mode indexed color uh, you can use it to specify the numbers of colors in your image if you have less than 256 colors then it will automatically set palette to exact and show you how many colors you have in your image um, so that could be a possibility for you. That sounds like um, close to kind of what I was thinking, um, but that seems to be the only thing aside from um, people using plugins to like a actively count what's going on. Okay. Yeah, Chris is also saying use index color mode in Photoshop, indeed. Um, okay. Or save for web legacy, yeah. So Mia, I, that's kind of what I was thinking is too, because when I say do save for web legacy or like, like I'm creating like animated GIFs or I'm using the Photoshop timeline and I go to export it, it usually does that same thing where it shows you like, here's everything that you're using um, in your, uh, your file currently, but I've never used that or pulled that up so that I could like sample a color or, or, or get the color codes or anything. So I don't know if you can go into that much detail and, and stuff with that um but it definitely would i mean maybe you could even take a screenshot of all of those colors and then sample them in a separate file uh, but that sounds like a lot of a lot of work to do for that <laughs> right 
Yeah, I'm trying to see if I want to do her pants like actually interestingly, but we'll see if this makes it work. Um, okay, yeah, I didn't realize that you could do the color, like get your colors like that. Cause I always end up being like, okay, I guess I'll count them. Um, so I love what you're doing right now. Yeah, we'll see if it looks the way I'm thinking or if it looks crazy. Marla says you can also you can go to image mode index color and it flattens the image but you can back out like you can do control z and go back okay. like revert um, okay. also we got about eight minutes until we do some portfolio reviews uh, cool. so everyone this is uh, last chance for today um, or for this week for portfolio reviews for Photoshop um, doing related work. Uh, so definitely if you are interested, get those portfolios in for your chance to be selected for a review. Um, and again, if you're over on YouTube, head over to behance.net slash live where we are having the, uh, the Adobe chat party over here. <laughs> um, you're very welcome, Lillian. I'm glad that you're here hanging out with us today. Stacy right. says this shadow is about to be amazing. And look, it totally is. <laughs> you know, I mean, we'll see. I'm gonna fin it's gonna be a really big process. These girls usually don't work. I don't usually give them as much detail, but I will need to uh, do the other side of her pants as well, like the other side of it. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. Let's try this. I was definitely feeling it though, like the whole time you were like zigzagging across, I was like, ooh, yeah. it's coming together. Oh man, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I could, you know, really go in there and go into the actual file, which might have been better, but let's see it this way. Just trying to think about it. How... Yeah, folks are loving the shadow. Yep, yep. I agree, folks. I agree, everyone. <laughs> Let's try it like this for a second. Let's see how that feels. Uh, Corey Fraser, welcome in. It's good to see you, man. Um, and Steve, you are absolutely right. For that values capture um, in Photoshop, you could use uh, Adobe Capture uh, to get a nice color palette. Um, um, or you could use capture on your phone. Uh, however, it, the amount of colors that it detects may be limited. Um, and if you want like literally a list of like the 200 plus different colors that you happen to be using in a, uh, in a, in any given file and any given image, it may be a little less accurate, um, but still useful. Um, so you could test that out. All right. It's kind of looking, I'm kind of just like going quickly. Um, Maria Lopez um, is curious how um, the how how your work and maybe your schedule and everything has been affected by by COVID nineteen. And this is a question that I'm always interested in maybe hearing from people because since freelancing can be like such a a different thing and and mean something totally different to so many different people, and because yeah. artists kind of develop their work day and their um their clients and and structure their projects so differently i'm always curious to kind of know um how it has changed uh for each individual so if you're comfortable um maybe you can talk a little bit about the differences so for me different workload wise i've been really lucky to not have much change nice. since i already was working from home remotely for all of my clients that's the norm for me. Mm -hmm. um, I usually work out of Soho House. I go there and it's like, you know, kind of like a WeWork ish place. Um, and that is the big change having, like, you know, the place that I like to go to work so I can get out of my apartment and be more focused away from home. That's been making me be a little slower with my turnaround, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, having all of this going on, kind of just like getting up, like, my routine was just like shifted. So I felt like I was a little off for, so, for quite a while before I was able to get the hang of like a routine that kept me focused. Um, gotcha. Yeah, I know that 
for me, a lot of things that have increased are like book projects because, you know, that's, uh, I think, an area that is thriving really a lot right now. Mm -hmm. um, anything that's in person obviously was canceled. Um, and then, you know, also, I guess, like planning, you know, like some, as a freelancer, sometimes I can just like, you know, run to the grocery store and get some groceries that I need and come home and then get my work done. But now, obviously, like there's lines and like you have to like wait a little, lot longer to get in the store so i have to like plan a lot better my oh yeah yeah of eating and getting food and things like that um i know one thing that was obviously like shipping for everything took a while so when i needed to ship out a lot of orders getting the next round of my packaging materials that took a long time which caused, caused a lot of delays um so those have been like the things i'm trying to think what else but i think that's been the biggest uh change is Kind of getting my routine like a good routine back on track because i was so used to my certain way of working or whatever yeah i i'm i was kind of um like in the same boat as you is like i have been like working from home for the last like eight years so it was not as big a transition for me as it was for a lot of other people to just suddenly be like working from home. And um, I'll tell you what though, since since everyone started working from home and started using Zoom and stuff, I have been like everyone's IT girl. Like, really? <laughs> yeah, like I get messages from people and they're like, you use Zoom, right? Can you teach me to use Zoom? Can you show it? And I'm like, I'm like, I can try. <laughs> That's so, so yeah, so everybody, cause like nobody else that I really knew aside from people who were also like streaming and, and working on remote teams had really any idea about like really how to do, um, like a live broadcast or a live call or share a screen. Yeah. Or, um, sometimes I answer questions just about like general etiquette of like, you know, what is a good looking background? What is a good space in your house to be having a meeting? What should you and should you not have on your desktop whenever you're going to share your screen to your boss and fellow coworkers and things that you should like, you know, you should tidy up and, and stuff like that. Just like the yeah. general etiquette of being on camera constantly. Um, so yeah, I've, I've turned into like everyone's go-to person that I know, uh, just like teach me how to use the thing on the computer because I don't I know. Need, <laughs> I need a little bit of, a little more assistance in this certain area. Stacy is screaming in caps, by the way, those oh, really? shadows. <laughs> I, I feel like they look off, but- Oh, I love work. them. <laughs> I'll, I'll work it later, but okay. I'm glad, I'm really glad that they like it. And that is our deadline, by the way. We just hit 11 o'clock. Um, so if you want to like, yeah, we can just t take a little pause here um, and then we'll jump over. And I sent you, I believe, um, uh, the place where you can find links to who we are going to peek at for the portfolio reviews today. I don't um, open that right now. Um, I am actually going to pop us over to the full cam screen and then now you can kind of open up whatever you need you let me know or now i can yes go for okay. it and i am pulling them up as well so that we can look at them together and then um hopefully you guys can't hear i think somebody in my house is desperately looking for dish soap and is talking about it right side outside of my office <laughs> so i hope you guys didn't catch that but that such is the nature of working from home and everybody being at home now, right? Is that there's things like that that come about. Um, okay, so I'm making sure I've got all these up and I believe that I do. I got, yeah. So my screen's not gonna be showing for now, correct? Um, I am going to, uh, if you wanna full screen it, um, just so, cause I'm gonna pop back over to that same scene. I am gonna switch it to my own desktop capture just so I can run through it. And then you can kind of, search through at your leisure and stuff without worrying about keeping particular things on the on the screen for the stream um so you can okay. feel a little more comfortable so let me pop over here yeah, um, let me know. Yeah. and then i am just going to there we go so you can go ahead and pull up the portfolios however is comfortable for you and we are going to dive into this 
Um, always need the dish soap. Yes, Cody. Indeed. Thank you. For, like, anytime something weird happens on a stream or something out of the ordinary, Cody is always there to either help me out or she's involved in the direct cause. I'm, not, I'm just kidding. Not Maybe not the direct cause, but me and Cody have had some very interesting broadcasts before. They've been fun. Um, okay, so today we are going to do a portfolio review for Yuck Young Choi um, and uh, Kristen Hartel. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, so let's begin with Yuck Young Choi. Um, and it looks like uh, they are from Seoul, Korea. Um, and usually what I like to do, um, for these Monica is I kind of do, I look at like the covers and stuff of the projects, but then I also like to look at, um, like the user icon and the banner and then maybe a little bit of, um, the information that's on like the, uh, the left hand side there. Um, where it kind of allows you to put like your social media um, or something and um, maybe we can kind of talk about um, how we feel about those elements at first because that would be like the initial like aside from the work the initial first impression of somebody coming to Yuck Young's uh, portfolio would be this so there's like a link to Instagram which I see um, I don't see a lot of like personal information about them. Um, yeah, I, I for me personally, I I don't always feel like it's one hundred percent necessary, but it is something that I look for myself. Like if I'm looking to work with somebody or to invite them to a project, I always do like to see a little bit of personal information. But I can understand that that is also not everyone's preference, um, especially in this case where it's possible that Yuck Young's first language may not be English and so they may have opted not to put it in Korean that could be a possibility what do you think I think that makes sense um yeah I was curious you know a bit about what they what their I guess passions are like what they're focused on for the mm -hmm. portfolio you know they have their specific style which is very easy to identify um but it is helpful to have the description of maybe like what it is that their portfolio is focused on or what kind of products they're looking for um so you know I mean, as a client, maybe what areas, if you were to refer them to. That's um, but I do like that they have their Instagram. Um, I think if they have a website, I don't know if that's as necessary because they have the portfolio here, but it is always helpful to have some of that information there. Um, maybe if some of it was added, you know, in Korean and in English, you could do that yeah. as an option. That would be a great option. <clears throat> yeah, I've seen okay. some people that do like a short suite to the point kind of like short intro so that it's not so much of like a bombardment of of words if they put it in two different languages and that tends to work pretty well sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. The cohesiveness of like the overall visual style and like, you know, the little logo, which is really well done and the banner, it all, it all does look really nice together yeah it's definitely very very um uniform like this person has a total style um i really love the minimal uh, like the minimalist approach to the icon and to the banner i first yeah. of all i always think it looks really cool when there's no border around the user icon so it looks like it's just like placed there instead of because it's actually like a circle around the the image you know, um, but when the background is white and there's no border, it just looks really cool and placed there. Uh, and then I think that the banner itself is like so sweet um, and there's not there's not too much going on, but there's also not too little. Um, it's just very well done. Um, but as for the projects, does, does do any of these projects stick out to you, Monica, that you would like to open up and kind of take a look at? Um, I really like, I wanted to see the first one with the for you know four kids together oh I little like, women uh, yeah yeah little women and then i love the one where it, the poster book by 529 guy laying down i think it's so interesting i wanted to those are the two i was going to open okay yeah let's do we could maybe do the little women one first and then jump over to the other after we take a look at it um okay. oh it looks like it's just one one image um okay so not well or maybe i'm just nope. i only saw oh. one for this one yeah it's only one um 
Let me see. I think it's a really, like, it's got, like, a seriously interesting um, texture to it because it's almost like illustrations from, like, older, like, vintage picture, like, picture books, but... Day. Yeah, it has. If you notice the background, though, is like has like a Gaussian blur, like a you know, mm -hmm. and it's showing distance in the back. I think that's really unique. I think that looks it, like it's done in a really nice way. And also, I noticed that you don't see as much of the, I guess, because of the blur, but the the black line, you don't get to see it as much. And I don't know if it's also not on everything in the background. Mm -hmm. but that helps separate it to you know these people in the front are the more focus of everything absolutely um, i didn't even notice that but you're right because the the dark lines that sort of like outline the characters um maybe the blurring of the background kind of took care of that but you're right i don't really see a lot of that dark color in the back um and i think it looks really really neat uh, i personally would love a little more context for this so like why did you decide to do an illustration based on little women and what the process was for this. I'd love to see like how this actually came together. Um, so I think that that, as far as presentation, I would say that context is missing. What do you think, Monica? I was gonna say, yeah, cause I was wondering a bit about what they're, if they're posing for a photo mm -hmm. or if they're, you know, standing, you know, and just kind of playing some kind of game um, or something just happened and they're standing like that for a specific reason. So I guess context, um, would be helpful because I don't know what the reason is for their posing, but I, yeah. so maybe having that, you know. It's been a long fun. time since I've read through Little Women too, so definitely like if, if somebody is not familiar with the subject matter, it can also be really hard to get the point across. Um, I have to remember that even myself all the time where I post like tons of Star Wars stuff and then I have to remember not everybody loves Star Wars as much as me so I have to write a little bit about what I'm doing and and what I'm presenting so that my general audience can like come in and just know what's going on. Um, so that's yeah I think I think that it beautiful work. Um, yeah, I, I would say context. Nice. And then you mentioned the poster book. Um, yeah. One was one that you wanted to look at. I was curious about it. Oh, I love, I love that. It was like on the blanket. It's so, I really love that of the trees. Yes. I really, really like that. I am curious about, let me see if I get bigger. I guess there's social chat. I was going to ask about like, you know, I don't, you know, can't see my cursor, but the shadows below like the different objects on the blanket mm -hmm. you can't see them as much they don't show up as much um so i was curious about or i would i guess you could add more shadows to the different elements so that they i guess feel a little more yeah because he has a shadow mm -hmm. and then or maybe i mean because i noticed the pencil has a shadow and the the paper balls have a shadow but maybe since the records and everything are flat they didn't bother with it because they're so they're flat. flat yeah but i think i see what you mean though is that when it's on everything else it almost feel like feels like it's necessary on like anything that's mm -hmm. in the scene um, yeah i'm also wondering if i guess now i'm looking at it more um is he he might be laying oh let me read what it says <laughs> i'm not reading it's really precious and it made me nah. made my <laughs> heart <laughs> smile <laughs> He's sitting, he might be, I guess he's inside, it looks like, and mm -hmm. the, the, under a window. Yeah. And that's why we had those lines above him. Um, that's I've, really cool. I've been thinking about you. I might have to tell you something, but I can hardly express my heart for you in words. That is so precious and wonderful and sweet, really and wonderful. my heart is smiling. <laughs> really, really wonderful. Yes, this is yeah, just so really nice. nice together. Um, the next image in this little slide is the one he's sitting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if he's sitting, I think he's sitting at a, in like a RV or he's sitting at a restaurant, but it looks more like it'd be like an RV type thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I was gonna ask about the little like light spot near his hand. I think he's uh, drawing a happy face in the condensation. Okay, okay, okay. Cause I was gonna ask about that. Maybe either move it up a little bit to more into the black yeah so see it more you know you could have it dip a little bit onto the green but have it mostly in the black so you could see it more mm -hmm. i agree um, or you can just, yeah make it, it and i also think because i feel like most of her 
um, edges of her, or him or her, I don't know, of um, their lighting. I've noticed the edges are softer, but the edges of all the artwork are harder edges. Mm -hmm. So I was curious, I feel like they could do that. They could do the lighting as well with hard edges and even the smiley face. I mean, I guess the smiley face, that one specifically needs to be done that way to show it. it's on the glass. But I was curious about that because I like I like the, all the like, like the, the like, harsh lines that you do. Yeah, I think you could probably so like. What do you think? Like to make that to bring the 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 happy face out a little bit because I'm was imagining it on the black and it might look less like it's on the window if it was only in the black region of the night and more like it was just something floating out in the sky because of the nature of the illustration style. Maybe that's why they chose to put it over some of the things, but you could probably improve the visibility of that happy face if, um, even though it wouldn't work like this in real life, but you darkened the actual happy face places where his like finger went through the condensation just to pull it out from the, the brighter part might or make it more visible. And then you wouldn't really be able to tell necessarily that it's darker than everything on the outside of the condensation. Um, yeah, or let's say you could um, have the background, and you, know, you could add some something on the window to make it read as a window, and have the background be a little, maybe slightly blurred, or maybe there's a color change or something to distinguish. Maybe those those lines that we're seeing, the black lines are more faint. So yeah, that that looks the smiley face, the blacks on it are, or you know, the darker areas are more in focus to yeah. show that it's closer to us. I agree. Even um somehow to distinguish that it's on the window um i would have to like look at reference images of how you know yeah like that. condensation and how that works drawing on like a mirror or on a window yeah um, even have to do something dripping down some little yeah droplets but this is down. i think i think overall um the work is really really solid i think i would just like a little more context um, however, I do want to change over to the next portfolio because I don't want to run out of time um, right. to give Kristen some feedback as well. So I'm going to jump over to um, Kristen Hard uh, Hardle. Um, I hope that I'm saying that right. This is really lovely. Um, what are your first impressions of like the first presentation page for, for this? My first impression is... I'm curious, I guess I'm wondering if they want to focus more on character or more on backgrounds. I, I didn't read the, uh, te the about me yet. So it says, I'm an illustrator and character designer specializing in silly and fun designs for mobile games, children's books, and animation. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. I think that definitely yeah. comes through too, like once I have that context. Mm -hmm. um, it does. It does. Especially like the silliness, like they're talking about, because you see a lot of that. It looks so nice. The campfire yeah. illustration is killing me right now. Like the yeah. marshmallows roasting the uh, kid <laughs> instead of the kid <laughs> roasting marshmallows. Yeah, and like you can really feel like how soft those marshmallows are. Like, oh yeah. Know, like, them. Soft on the outside, but not so much on the inside, apparently. <laughs> right, all right. Um, maybe we can click into one um, and, and give a little bit of feedback on the art specifically. Which one calls to you, Monica? Um, I'm, I'm curious about, well, I'm trying to see which ones have more images than just one, but the photo environment study, um, I'm curious about okay. one. Well, let's jump into the photo environment study. That's the one with the white, the white building there. Um, yeah. and let's see what we've got in here. This is really cool. I think mm -hmm. this is just a single image, but still, um, really, really nice. Yeah, I think, y y like, Kristen, you use very, um, and it could also be the nature of the the um, the building itself here, um, but I think that you've gone through and you've blocked out all of the perfect simple shapes for this and then kind of lit it and textured it in a way that is so wonderful and accurate that it reads very, very well. Yeah, it's really, really nice. The composition of every, like, just really nice overall yeah. you know, i would like to know why you chose it though you know um sure. so context yeah. but so, yeah there can they add is that a thing um where they could add context below 
or I guess it would have to be part of the image when they upload it. Well, you can add like a little text region in between different elements. So there's definitely a way that um, she could like add like, this is why I chose this image and this is why it's important to me. Or this is even, it maybe it doesn't even have to do with the image because maybe you don't really care about the image so much as you cared about um, honing the skill to actually get this point across. So maybe you could put something down that just said, I um, have been doing, like, even if it just says, this is a collection of photo environment studies that I have been doing to improve my environment skills, something like that, so that we can know. Um, and then I would say anytime you do a new one, so as not to clutter your portfolios, just keep adding them here. So then your viewers know, like, this is where those kinds of things are going to be. Um, but really gorgeous work. Yeah, really, really nice. Yeah. Um, is there another one that you'd like to jump into? Um, maybe the floodlight one, because I was curious about it. I wanted to see what's going on and if there's any more photos. This um, is so cute. Yeah, I love the design of the fish. It's so cute. These eyes are killing me. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, I love those goldfish that have like the big like bulb eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, <laughs> I rescue them anytime I go to like a place that sells fish, like a Walmart, or if I go into a pet store, um, and there's like, if I see a big eyed fish getting bullied in a tank, I will take it home. I will <laughs> every time. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I, I um, love, the, yeah. I mean, I love the way the blinds are done, how they're like, they're not all perfect. It's all like uneven, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. Like, it and stuff I, I like that a lot i love seeing things like that i like uh, that the green on the tree if like if you really look closely it's actually very like abstract but i can see like it looks like a birch tree to me with like the moss and stuff and and yeah. and things growing on it like it reads exactly what it's intended to be even though that's not technically what it is so i think that you Kristen, have like you do like a really good job of getting the point across with you know the the bare simple shapes that is needed to show and like make my brain register you know what this is mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah. really well my my only question is um the focus figuring out the focus of the piece i know it's you know overall the fish mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also curious if there's a reason why the tree is so light in the background like if there was something happening back there that like I guess it just makes me ask questions, which is also good because that's what you want when you're like creating an image for animation or for a game. Yeah, and people are curious and want to explore. So, I think definitely like the green is kind of almost as bright as the orange, and so my eyes definitely go there instead of following the trail of fish. So that might be something to think about. Um, we do have about five minutes before we have to take off though. So um, I think maybe we should kind of switch gears here um, and maybe go back to do a quick review of the work that you created today, um, Monica, and do like a little recap for maybe those who jumped in during the portfolio reviews. Um, and then we'll talk about a little bit about where people can find you online and stuff before we take off, just to make sure everybody gives you a follow and um, knows where they can follow your project. So. I'm going to switch back over here. Boom. There we go. So why don't you, oh, also just like a general shout out um, to Yuck Young Choi and Kristen Hardo. Thank you um, both so very much for sharing your portfolios. Really wonderful work. Um, and it was a pleasure to look through it. Um, but yeah, why don't you, uh, Monica, give like a little uh, recap of what you did and what you were going for. Um, uh, for a couple minutes um, so that we can kind of see what you did um, and then let everybody know where the best place is to find you online on social media and anything like that. Okay. So what I did um, here, sorry, one second, what's going on? Uh, I should have the colors are working. Um, I started with, you know, a design that I had done previously, which looked a bit like this. And then I showed, you know, the, how I use reference, a lot of reference images mm -hmm. to create my, you know, design and stylize it um, and kind of like find my own way to do it in, in the world that we're creating with these, with these three girls. Um, I also talked about how I kind of name 
or like color co coordinate my references to ones that I want to use for specific parts, or if I want to use it for the entire thing. Um, for this reference, you know, we went and kind of used that oversized sweater thing to create this look. Um, and then I made it, you know, her skirt a little shorter and whatnot. Uh, made the colors a bit crazier. Um, I think what else to explain? What else should I go through? Um, I think that uh, you kind of touched a lot on um, how, like you said, like kind of taking a concept that you had done before and used reference to kind of alter them. But you also did share throughout the stream um, and anyone who missed it, you should go back and kind of check it out. Um, a lot of really fun um, quick little shortcuts and tips for how to keep track of all of the different small pieces in your file, um, which is really cool because you do end up getting uh, like a lot of different uh, pieces. And I specifically thought it was really unique how you used the smart objects to kind of sort things so that you could click and and edit the contents. Yeah, and, and kind of go in and change up your character as you're working, which I personally, I don't think that I've ever seen anybody really do that with illustration. Um, and that was really, really, um, kind of a standout thing to me where I was like, wow, that's epic. I got to try and do this with a painting or something. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. What I did here is, you know, if I wanted to edit the girl in the main composition, I would edit her in here, you know, mm -hmm. change her hair. I'll save this and then we'll go back to our main thing and it'll adjust to press there. It's an hour hair short. Yeah. That's uh, so that's cool. That. Yeah. Just so I can make certain changes without changing if I've already started the lighting um, or if I've done other things in the background or, you know, if she, as I was saying earlier, if she was like duplicated and we had three of her where we wanted to change them all together and make sure they all get changed to the exact same dimension, it's helpful to have them in a smart object. Yeah. Um, yeah. That. And so I have that for all of them, you know, I have all these little layers, but yeah, all of them have the same concept of being able to change things quickly and save it out to yeah, uh, so clever. Um, um, I think then like we do have to take off in like a minute and a half. So real quick, um, where's the best place people um, can uh, follow you online and the best place to check out your portfolio? Um, so I'm, I would say Instagram is the best place to find me. Okay. Um, Instagram is my first and last name, Monica Ahananu. Um, so I think it should be spelled out down there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm pretty good at posting all my current work on there. So it will be very up to date. It might be slightly more up to date to my website, but my website is also M and then my last name dot com. So M dot com. Perfect. And we got Cody has just posted actually your Insta and your website in the chat. So that is awesome. Um, and yeah, you know, Monica, this has been such a joy um, being able to, to watch you work and hang out and talk with you today. Um, I really appreciate you joining us um, and sharing your work. Um, I hope you had fun. <laughs> I definitely did. I had a lot of fun. This was so fun. Um, but we, we do have to take off because we are at uh, the end of our time for today. Um, but Monica and I will actually be back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific yet again for another installation um, of her work. So um, definitely tune in tomorrow and we will see you next time. Adios, everyone. Bye.